Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Kian Wong. I'm today's host for today's special webinar presentation uh, titled, um, actually it's a free preview webinar. We've been doing these, uh, these free webinars in a lead up to our two day annual event, mid-July, which is an introduction to early intervention postural orthodontics. And we've had a series of free webinars. This is our fourth and final one before our, our big event in three weeks time. And today's uh, topic is when eight can be too late, facial changes in airway surgery, the mewing phenomenon and the orthotropic connection. And with us today is Dr. Mike Mew from London. Welcome, Mike. We'll do a formal introduction uh, later on when he joins us after a, a short presentation from Simon. We also got my brother, Dr. Simon Wong, the founder of Postural Orthodontics. Welcome. And Dr. John Flutter, who's now based in London. Welcome, John. Good to have you here. And uh, we've got Susan, Dr. Susan Shea, who's a pediatric specialist from Sydney and uh, has been with Simon on this journey the last couple of years since we've been teaching postural orthodontics and uh, her young, two young kids have been uh, uh, beneficiaries, you could say, to some of this, this work that we'll be sharing with you today. So without further ado, Simon, I will pass it over. You can skip through the, you know, the, the bios. We'll do that. I'll do that later on, but perhaps you can uh, we also want to give a big shout out to our sponsors for this year's event, Dentarum Australia. Uh, produce some amazing appliances and uh, A Point Dental Lab. Hello, Enrico, who's been with Simon for 14 years. Um, over to you, Simon. So, um, welcome, welcome. We have um, some special guests tonight to um, join us informally. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the um, uh, things that we will go through in our course in the um, upcoming uh, session in July, but we'll also talk a little bit about what um, Dr. Uh, Mike Mew uh, is doing with his uh, podcasts. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have you guys also join us on um, our podcast discussions that will uh, be released um, sometime in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, so we'll spend some time. Um, maybe you guys will learn a little bit about me and where I've come from. And um, we will hopefully have an understanding of the journey that um, my mentor and teacher, John Mew, has set um, uh, me on. So the um, guests tonight, uh, Mike Mew, which will talk uh, about his involvement with uh, orthotropics and um, his um, uh, champion, uh, being the champion of um, an understanding of the etiology of malocclusion. We will spend some time with uh, Dr. Susan Shea, who is a pediatric dentist in um, Sydney and um, get her perspective on um, how she has helped her own children um, over the years with changes to their posture and improvements to their malocclusion. Um, some of you will have known John Flutter um, uh, for many, many years as he has been on the lecturing circuit for well, for decades and uh, sharing his knowledge about posture and uh, myobrace and orthotropics. Um, one of the things that I want to share with you is my journey in changing perspective. You know, we look at the world in a way that is um, set in our mind's eye by our upbringing. And one of the things that were taught to us um, in dental school, in orthodontic programs, is, you know, 13 is a magic number. 13 is the time where you start to do real orthodontics. And my perspective of the world changed when John Mew 
spoke one phrase which literally turned my world upside down. He said, Simon, you know eight is too late. And I had no comprehension of what that meant. He didn't elaborate. And of course, John tends not to elaborate. He tends to speak words of wisdom and expect that we actually understand what he just said. So I pressed and I said, what do you mean? Can you explain eight is too late? He said, Simon, I know you're an ambitious young man. You want to correct this child's malocclusion, don't you? I said, yes, of course. I want to fix things. I like fixing things. And he said, well, you have to set a realistic goal. And that goal has to be more realistic the older the child gets. And I said, what do you mean by realistic? He said, you cannot correct a malocclusion that has traveled in a vertical downward and backwards rotation, a downswing in jaw development. If you allow it to mature, he said, puberty hardens a child's face. It begins the last journey that child will take before he becomes an adult. And when puberty hits, whatever direction that child's face is pointing will be the direction that they will mature into. I didn't understand why it was a set hard rule until I started doing orthotropics myself. And I realized it is a four year journey to change a downswung jaw complex to an upswing, a forward development. Controlling vertical takes four years before puberty sets or you will never achieve the promise of the orthotropic goal. John said the maxilla is the dominant jaw. It is the one that sets the tone of the growth. And maxillas mature before the 10th year. The widest tooth in the arch are the 12 year old molars. When the six year old molars come through, they are close to 90% of the final width. When you measure the intermolar width of an upper six year old molar, it needs to be in its 40th, 40 millimeters in dimension for there to be any hope of the wisdom teeth to fit, of any hope of the tongue to be comfortable within the palate. That understanding of when a child ceases to become a child and turns into a teen is the most important concept that I want to share with you. We can guide growth in children predictably, consistently, but we need time to change a wayward direction. You know, we all live in different corners of the world. Susan's in Sydney, I'm in Melbourne, uh, Mike, John, and John are in London. If I said, Susan, we're going to head towards um, a visit to London. And our thought is, okay, which direction am I going to go? You know, do I hop on a flight that is a direct flight? 
or do I pick the cheapest journey that takes me to South America first? Once we make a decision about choosing the direction we're going to travel based on what is most convenient, what is cheapest, what is easiest, sometimes we find that we end up on the opposite end of the earth. Before we realize, time is ticking. I want to share with you my journey in early intervention. I want to share with you how postural orthodontics is different to other forms of early intervention. I, I want to help you, those who are interested in creating full-time practice in this discipline. I want to share the beginning of this journey in July, 16th and 17th of this year. And I want you to appreciate those who have led the way for me, Mike Mew, John Flutter. And I want you to experience what Susan has experienced with me as I have experienced with John and Mike. I began this journey not with any interest in orthodontics. I had no interest in treating children. I was a restorative dentist, a nathologist. I realized after treating complex restorative cases that uh, it would be better if I learned to move teeth. So I studied how to move teeth. I thought of aesthetic ways of moving teeth. It led me to a concept that treating early may give me a better result than just treating baby boomers and trying to move teeth in very mature jaws. That journey opened up an understanding that maybe there was more to treating teeth, that there was the possibility that jaws could be developed. And that understanding helped me piece together the connection with TMD disorders and obstructive sleep apnea issues. We are fortunate that we haven't traveled this journey as the first scouts. People have understood the concept of light movements. Unfortunately, few have ever understood the concepts of root causes. And it wasn't until I came across a very interesting book, The Cause and Cure of Malocclusion by John Mew, that I started to understand my interest in treating restoratively disharmonious malocclusions was misguided. My journey began 15 years ago. I thought I was already a seasoned dentist. At that time, I had been 16 years in practice, a restorative dentist who was not interested in teaching, in <clears throat> treating children. But The Cause and Cure of Malocclusion by John Mew turned my world upside down. I learned that there was an environmental cause for malocclusion. I learned that what we had been taught was only a portion of the truth. So I began my journey and I traveled to London and I spent time with John, and I spent time with Mike. I flew 
to Los Angeles and was mentored by Bill Hank. One of the fortunes in my life was to be taught by both John and Mike. The perspective of two generations of orthodontists walking the path of understanding the truth behind what causes malocclusion allowed me to see how the world can change but how the world also resisted change. The three to five years of my life that disappeared in the cabin of an aeroplane was the most difficult period of my life because it upended everything that my restorative practice had developed into. I became, I became a student again. I spent time with like-minded people who helped me develop a new discipline and a new interest in dentistry. I realized that this journey that I was taking was a difficult one and that I needed guidance from those who <laughs> taken the journey before me. And I was lucky to have found mentors who lit the way ahead for me. I was afraid to do what they did. I am not brave. And I realized that John's pearly orthotropics is a process that involved penalties for children who didn't behave. And I wasn't brave enough to treat other people's children that way. So I developed an understanding of how to use posture culturally. And I remembered the teachings that my grandmother instilled upon me of manners when eating, of manners when speaking, of holding good posture and presenting well to the world. And I developed a story that I could share with the children that I looked after. And I shared that story with other dentists who were interested in orthodontists who were interested, in pediatric dentists who were interested. And I went to Spain and I went to the Scandinavias and I taught at the universities. And I began to share my achievements in the changes that John and Mike had led me towards. This is the largest group of pediatric dentists gathered in one place in the world. And I was fortunate to be amongst professors and teachers who had broken ground before me in sharing their understanding of how posture affects malocclusion, how posture creates ideal occlusions. How is postural orthodontics different to all the other systems? I told you before that I wasn't brave. Being someone who is not adventurous, I'm someone who's comfortable working within systems. So I created a way of teaching posture within our existing orthodontic system. I source literature that supported the understanding behind growth, 
I source literature that confirmed functional appliances do not alter skeletal growth patterns. But I used John Mew's understanding of how skeletal changes are possible with postural appliances. And we created a methodology, a protocol that could be shared with dentists and orthodontists and pediatric dentists who wanted to make a change to the community that they service. This research led me to understand sleep disorder breathing is intertwined with posture. This led me to understand that the appliances that were used were not invented out of thin air. These had been used throughout the orthodontic profession for decades. We started to research the outcomes of my clinical practice. And we found that it is indistinguishable the developmental problems between malocclusion, between, between obstructive sleep apnea, between the majority of the diseases that we treat in dentistry and in medicine. We compared the outcomes of traditional functional appliances with orthotropic appliances. And we found significant, significant differences in the outcomes. How is it that we can get two degrees of change? How is it that we can control vertical? How is it that the University of Alberta's orthodontic department has taken an interest? How is it that the University of Texas a and have taken an interest on the vertical control through the use of orthotropic postural eye block treatment. The journey that we all take doesn't have to be alone. You know, those who are interested in treating early feel isolated, feel out on a ledge, feel like an outlier. Well, you don't have to be an outlier. You don't have to be on your own. There is a community here to support. We want to help you develop solutions to your needs, to your patient's needs. We want to connect you with someone who can guide you. We want to connect you with your existing patients and help them understand what is causing their children's developmental issues. Do join us for a new evidence-based approach to early intervention orthodontics. Saturday and Sunday, 16th and 17th, July, 2022. Professor John Mew, Dr. Susan Shen, and ENT Mr. Perry Burston and myself will share our journey in early intervention postural orthodontics. Simon, and maybe I can uh, take over and just, just to give a brief overview of the event and then we'll invite our panelists to join us, all right? So I'll just share my screen. So thank you for that, Simon. Uh, can you see my screen now, Simon, and everyone else? Yes. All right, terrific. All right, so just to clarify, uh, we are having our annual two-day intro to postural thought. Uh, on the weekend of July 16th and 17th, it is a virtual live stream. So, you know, we had 18 countries represented last year. So, uh, you know, Zoom, uh, especially over the last few years, has helped us, you know, still connect. 
so we've been able to teach all our intro courses as well as advanced courses, <clears throat> which we have as well, uh, online. Um, plus, we do have a special today, as mentioned. We want to give you instant access to last year's recordings of the two-day event. It was the same core teachings from Simon. However, we had different guests. We had a MaxFAC surgeon, Mr. Barrowman, and we had an orthodontist, Dr. Sandra Khan. Uh, this year, as Simon mentioned, we've got Professor John Mew, Dr. Susan Scher, uh, and ENT surgeon Perry Burston. So uh, we want to do, you know, this is our last promotional webinar before our event in three weeks. So we want to offer everyone a special bonus, which includes uh, Professor John Mew's book. So the, the, the live webinar special for the 200 registrants on today, not everyone's turned up, about 80 or so have turned up tonight. Um, for those of you who made the effort to join us, we do have a special, uh, the, what we call the premium VIP ticket, which includes the recordings of the actual event in July, but also you will get instant access to the recordings, 20 odd hours from last year's event. Uh, and it also includes Q&A support from Simon inside his closed Facebook group, where you can ask questions related to <clears throat> the course content until the end of October. So there's plenty of after event support as well. But if you enroll tonight, uh, we're offering about $250 off. Uh, so instead of paying the, the July, you know, a lot of people will wait last minute to, to join. If you joined in July, it would be uh, roughly 1600 US uh, for the premium ticket. But for tonight, we wanted to make a very special offer. It's just 1150. All right, it's 1,150 US dollars. And we will also include, uh, uh, as a small, you know, uh, thanks to John for, you know, everything he's, he's helped with the entire community over the last 50, 60 years of his teachings, we'll include a copy of his book. You, you can buy it online. Uh, if you don't join our event, do buy his book. It's, it's available on his website, orthotropics.com forward slash shop for roughly... 150 pounds or about 190 US. But uh, tonight, if you join, we'll include it as a free bonus. If you um, join the, uh, the 1150 option, there's also five payments of 250. If you want to spread it out over five, six months, uh, five months, uh, you can do five payments of 250. If you have the book already, uh, then we'll knock off. 150, so it's just under a thousand US, 997, uh, or five payments of 220. So you can see when you go to the website, straightteethnaturally.com forward slash webinar special, which I will include in the chat box. Uh, I'll do that now so everyone can go there. Actually, I just you can see here, this is the website, like so. I'll just include it in the chat. Uh, so when you go to this website, um, you know, just as a call to action, it's human psychology, if you, you know, as a way to, you know, we will, uh, the special is for tonight and uh, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee anyway. Well, uh, the guarantee extends full money back guarantee until the end of day two of the event. So you can literally attend the live event, live stream. And if you find it's not for you, uh, if you go through last year's recordings straight away, which you'll get instant access, and if you find it's not for you, then you simply just email myself at info at straight teeth naturally, and we will offer a full refund, um, though the book is not refundable. We're going to ship you Professor John Mew's book. Uh, we'll, we'll refund you $997. Just, just to be clear, a lot of people go, oh, I don't want to make a quick decision. Well, we're making it risk-free. You, you can you know, review everything over the next three weeks and make a decision then. So there's a couple of different options here. NB means there's no book. Just so there's clarity here, 997. Uh, with the book, it's 1150, as you can see there. There is a payment option of five monthly payments for each of the two options. So that's it. That's a sh short little pitch. Um, so once again, just go to straightteethnaturally.com forward slash webinar special. I will stay on at the end of the presentation, which will 
you know, we still got it. It's only, you know, halfway in. Uh, we're going to invite all the panelists to join us now. Uh, but after the uh, panel presentation and Q&A, I will stay on and ask, answer any questions in relation to the event for those who are interested. So moving on. So Simon, you want to, um, let me do the formal present introductions, if I may. So the mini presentation discussion podcast four-way panel tonight, I uh, will be covering when eight is too late, as well as uh, the facial changes uh, in airway surgery and the orthotropic connection. It's a conversation with Dr. Mike Mew, John, Dr. Flutter, uh, Dr. Susan Sheb, and, and Simon, and Professor John Mew has just joined us. He um, wasn't sure whether he could make it, so I'm going to invite John. Uh, fine. Good. I can't switch my eye. Oh, here we are. Start. Wonderful. Uh, no. Can you yes. hear me? <laughs> yes, we can. Hello, Good. John. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining us last minute. We uh, didn't want to impose on you again. You were our guests the last few times, so we thought, you know, well, Mike, yes. we've been having no, some I good conversations. Some... I've, Are I've you a little bit low, John? Bit. Sorry. Can we, uh, can, can we trouble you to just tilt your camera down a bit so we can... Yes, I can see. You. Here we are. Wonderful. Hey, Presto. There I am. Presto. Wonderful. So let me just do a quick introduction. And uh, so we have... We don't need any introduction. The, the creator of Orthotropics, Professor John Mew. Um, and we also have Dr. Mike Mew, who's the lecturer and lead clinician at the London School of Facial Orthotropics. Um, my, Dr. Mike Mew has lectured extensively around the world. He has a phenomenal YouTube channel, which we'll talk about. It's interesting and always fascinating to see um, any profession becoming viral on YouTube and really becoming an influencer. We'd love to hear how he created this mewing phenomenon in just a few years, a uh, quarter of a million subscribers and growing and uh, you know, really create an awareness of the tropic premise and tongue chewing and whatnot. So I'd love to hear from Mike. Uh, his vision is fully integrated by a feedback system that assists both children and adults to improve their health, specifically the symptoms described. Dr. Mike is causing a revolution in healthcare and is pushing for debate on what is causing crooked teeth with the orthodontic profession. Dr. Mike aims to change a section of modern medicine by making it evidence-based and focusing on long Term health of patients. So we'll do subscribe to Orthotropics, uh, his YouTube channel, where you will get a lot of uh, discussions with his with Professor John Mew and other things that you know. There's hundreds of videos, I believe, uh, that you've released over the last seven eight years. With us also is Dr. John Flutter, who's over 40 years of experience in dental facial orthopedics and has lectured also in, uh, extensively in 70 countries. Wow. On this topic to dentists, orthodontists, sleep physicians, chiropractors, osteopaths, physiotherapists, and dental assistants. Uh, he's visited dental and orthodontic offices in many countries and advise, uh, on advising them on treatment delivery. Has Dr. Flutter has been in general practice for over 50 years. I believe you're semi-retired or right now and has owned general dental practices in England, Australia, and Ukraine. He's worked in Singapore, has done voluntary work in Vanuatu and Timor Leste. Leste. Uh, he now lives in London and divides his time between teaching worldwide and consulting in his clinic in Kiev. And also is Dr. Susan Shea, is a pediatric dentist in private practice in Cogra, Sydney, Australia. Her special interests include integrative approaches to optimizing oral health through good oral posture, nutrition, growth guidance, and required surgical intervention. The quest for understanding growth has taken her on a journey with the POS system, the myofunctional orthodontics. Uh, student of also Dr. John Flutter, the Dr. German Ramirez Yenes, frenial plasty with Dr. Sorosh. Zaggy and now partial orthodontics with Dr. Simon Wong. She's been one of the advanced students and been with Simon, uh, learning under Simon's mentoring for the last couple of years. The drivers for this thirst of knowledge are her children. Are they still seven and a half or nine? Or maybe I've, I've, this is outdated. Eight and, Eight and a half and 10. There we go. Uh, this is, must be from last year's presentation. They are current benefactors of Dr. Simon's expertise and teachings and what's not. Su Susan, welcome. You'll be joining us in July for a formal yeah. presentation, um, mm -hmm. which, is a, which will be very exciting. You, you uh, started 
St. George Pediatric Dental Specialist with your good friend, I believe. Mm-hmm. And um, your children are your model patients. <laughs> so they actually w- 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 won't give away too much, but you'll be covering your incredible journey, uh, the tale of your two thumb-sucking kitties, uh, who my, my son is still sucking thumbs. He's three. So we're going to get Uncle Simon to fix that. But uh, anyway, so yes, thank you for joining us, Susan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to your formal presentation. And uh, so now we're going to have this kind of panel discussion. Simon, do you want to take over? You can share your screen uh, to go over. You, we put together a short 10-slide presentation on airway surg- surgery and how it's the orthotropic connection, which is very fascinating. As a lay person, I'm not a dentist, but uh, I found this very fascinating putting this slides, helping with these slides. So over to you, Simon, and uh, you can open up discussions with the panel. I'll butt in for a moment. Yes, please, John, go I ahead. Button, I just want to say that I don't really want to take part in this. I've done my thing. I've joined just to see everybody else. Oh, good to see you. Well, feel free to chime in. <clears throat> this is very informal. We There's nothing for, well, we put together 10 slides, but uh, we're going to do a far more in-depth discussion tomorrow, actually. We're going to do one hour, Simon, Mike, and, and John Flutter will do a one-hour podcast, which we will release on, I believe, your YouTube channel, Mike, um, in, in a few days or next week or whenever. So we'll email everyone when that's out. But just as a teaser of what will be covered, we just this is kind of a, a dry run of what will be going in a lot more depth. Simon, over to you. So um, one of the things that I was hoping to do as a, a side event is to bring on uh, an awareness for you guys uh, of, of what uh, Mike Mew and John Flutter have been doing for a number of years. They've been running a podcast and uh, releasing it on uh, YouTube and just discussing all things orthotropy. And um, in uh, an event that we're going to do tomorrow, which will be released sometime in the next few weeks, we're going to be talking a little bit about how Uh, facial changes in airway surgery and the connects with uh, orthotropics. And um, I'm going to run through very quickly some of the discussion points and give you the story that we will be going into more depth uh, when hopefully you'll join us. Uh, Mike, after I go through this quick preview of um, the discussion, uh, Mike can talk a little bit about his uh, channel and um, talk a little bit about uh, how Mewing has um, connected a much larger audience. And then uh, we can have a, a chat with John and to Susan as well. But the, the reason uh, we are going to speak on this particular topic is that until the mid 90s, Orthognathic surgery was all about putting teeth together. And it wasn't until Larry Walford released his work on understanding that the occlusal plane in good growing people, in people who had no health and dental issues, was very, very specific. And he understood that uh, that upswing, that forward rotation of the mandible, in the true mandibular rotation uh, that happens um, in the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth year of your life, shifts the jaws into a very specific position. And he tried to emulate those growth changes surgically in people who were compromised. And he made changes in the mid nineties that literally no one could understand. And he developed a technique of maxilla mandibular advancement, which was counterclockwise, which was an upswing, which was a true mandibular rotation, which was what John has mentioned because John's lectured with uh, Larry Walford. He says, well, yes, that's what we do with our children. And he took, Larry Walford took these surgical concepts and he changed the way maxillary facial surgeons treat sleep disorder breathing. The concepts that he taught of 
counterclockwise rotation, upswinging the jaw, forward rotating the jaw, allowed teeth in vertically compromised patients to be uh, nicely closed. They were able to enlarge the airway by taking down swung jaws and upswinging them surgically. But one of the problems that they encountered was they were still using techniques that were based on trying to get teeth to fit when the jaws wouldn't. And they split the jaws in a way that made sense if you were trying to get teeth to fit. Stanley Liu, who is the lead surgeon of the Stanford Sleep Clinic, observed in drug-induced sleep endoscopy that despite 20 years of advancement and counterclockwise rotation, upswinging the jaws and developing wonderfully enlarged airways, that there was still a bottleneck, that despite this correct positioning of the jaws, the oral pharynx continued to collapse. And all the failures, despite the the structural changes, were linked to the soft palate not having the tension that it needed. And he realized that it was because we were moving the maxilla in an unnatural way. Growth doesn't splinter the jaw into three parts. Growth is very specific. It widens and moves upwards. So he realized that he had to break his surgery into two sections. He had to widen the upper jaw first, and then as a second part, he could then upswing the maxilla and mandible in a counterclockwise rotation in excess of two centimeters, two and a half centimeters, double, triple, what you could do if you split the maxilla into three parts. And then he realized, most importantly, that single piece movement of the maxilla in an upward and forward rotation allowed not only a significant greater improvement in mandibular positioning, but it tensioned the oral pharynx and literally cured the last bottleneck of sleep disorder breathing. And as a consequence of understanding the right way jaws should be placed, he started to achieve facially aesthetic results that were out of this world. When I look at his work, and when I showed Stanley my work, he said he felt vindicated that what I was doing naturally vindicated what he had envisaged was the right way of moving jaws. Moving the maxilla first in a transverse dimension then moving it in a forward and upward movement as one piece, allowing the soft palate to be brought into the equation. See, everyone thinks of the palate as just the hard tissue, but the palate is also the soft palate. Peter Bouchang, who is helping me with my research, who's supervising, my vertical control through orthotropics, understood that the etiology of malocclusion, of hyperdivergence, and of rectonathic patients, long face, short-chinned patients, the etiology appears to be environmental due to postural adjustments related with compromised airways and weak musculature It vindicates the work that John has done. It supports his understanding that 
fixed appliances downswing the jaws. That postural techniques upswing the jaws. You know, this research was done decades, decades before anyone understood these concepts of how facial aesthetics is tied tightly with sleep disorder breathing. The treatment that I do because of what John and Mike have taught me is called Hurley orthotropics. The changes that are possible when you correct a child's posture and you widen their maxilla and you encourage a forward and upward growth and then you allow the mandible to catch up over a four or five year time span that allows the tongue to tie in with not only the hard palate but the soft palate and bring the whole complex away from the back of the throat. Vertical changes are possible when the posture changes. Your skeletal growth pattern is not fixed by your genetics. It is an environmental outcome. We realized that children who are treated four or five years before they hit puberty have the best chance of not needing surgeons like Stanley Lou when they're in their 50s. John Mew brought to the world's attention an understanding of how posture is linked to malocclusion. Posture is linked to ideal occlusion. And I hope that Mike now can talk a little bit about, um, you know, your podcast and the... Yeah. Changes that you've been able no, to be <clears throat> um, so let's um let's go into okay. uh, uh, can how do I get into so that we can all uh, do I stop screen sharing or yeah just stop screen sharing and just have a conversation with everyone this is now the panel so <laughs> Mike well thank you very much Simon you know it was really good I'm um, I, I had some interesting points I was going to point out on your um, your presentation. The, I think you said the eight's getting too late, and that's very true, unless you get a hyper-motivated individual. And this is, there's so much you can do for someone, but, and that peters out at around eight years old, but the amount someone can do for themselves is very, very different. If they're personally self-motivated, you know, I had a 14 year old boy come to see me because he was class two. So the top front teeth were ahead of the bottom front teeth. So the jaw was set back in relative terms, depending how you define that. And he'd been recommended having two upper teeth taken out on the top pulled back. And he found me on the internet he dragged his parents down here and he literally did. You know, when I said jump, he said, how high? I've rarely had patients like that. And we've had, I tell you, the problem I've now got with him is closing all the space we created. So what I often find with the older groups, it's just closing the space. I mean, you wouldn't dream of taking any teeth out in his head now because you've got bags and bags of space. I mean, we could probably get an extra wisdom tooth in there when we finished. So, and it, but he, Mostly motivated himself. He did it, which was fascinating. Also, the Simon, you mentioned that 40 millimeter whip. And so if anyone's looking around, the way I measure that 40 millimeter whip is measuring clean between 
the molars, you know, clean between the molars on this sort of right, you know, it's really the minimum width between the molars. So we're not going into fossas, we're not looking at cusp tips, and that's a lot of space, and that's a good benchmark if you're below that or above that. And of course, um, Simon, you're, you're rightly saying you don't have that space, you're likely to have problems in the future. Then when you were talking about Stanley Lewis, the, the old type of orthodontics was trying to fit the teeth to old standards. Very, very true. But it was it, it was it was the old standard. You know, we've been using keflometric x-rays that were taken in the middle of the last century. You know, what's the validation of doing that? Well, that's when we got keflometric x-rays. You know, we're talking about a problem here that started 10,000 years ago. Using a reference point 100 years ago, or well, 70 years ago, for something that started 10,000 years ago, it leaves you a little bit, um, well, it's foundation stones in the wrong place. It leaves you struggling to understand the greater understanding of what's happening. Well, now, well, I, uh, I think that one of the interesting concepts is, you know, orthodontists and um surgeons who work with orthodontists are obsessed about teeth yet none of them consider wisdom teeth as teeth no no and, i mean and, I, I often say this what happened to the wisdom teeth yeah it's like well if you wanted to focus all your attention on the teeth why not focus on all 52 of them 32 no there's 52 teeth Oh, yeah, well, we can do the deciduous teeth as well. Yes. Okay, fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, good point. Okay, I'll, I'll move sideways. I'll go back out to... So um, I realised some time ago that we needed to get more information out into the public. I've been advised that a good way of marketing yourself was to have this new thing called a YouTube channel. So I decided to, you know, I was working with a guy and we decided to put some videos up there because it was, we were putting videos, what's an overbite, what's a crossbite, these, you know, on everything to, to just drive traffic to our website. And of course, I was itching to put videos out on what we were saying and doing. So I'd put a lot of videos out there. And then I gave a lecture to, you know, what's, you know, you can look this lecture up. It was the one that made me famous. It was to the 21 convention sort of lecture you wouldn't really give if you really did your market research and checked out who you were going to give the lecture to. Because this gave the ideas to a young audience and presented it in a digestible and, and interesting way to a young audience. At the, and I presented how faces are growing, how they're growing incorrectly, how this affects the health and, of course, health and appearance of the face. And I think this twigged something in these people's minds, because what I say, I presented the basically the pathological process. We all understand that malocclusion has a strong environmental etiology. In fact, it most likely, according to all the research, has an overwhelming environmental etiology. Yes, it will clearly have some genetic influence, but same genes, same environment same output but of course if you have an environmental etiology then there's something you can do about it within your lifetime now this clearly resonated with these young individuals and at the end of the lecture i was beseeched with these in these, these young men mainly and some women who were saying well, well how do i improve my facial form and I thought, I, I said to them, well, God, you'd be, you'd be crazy to try because it's so hard work. However, on the other hand, you'd be crazy not to try because, hell, what else are you doing? What else are you doing with your mouth? And, you know, it, it, it fits with similar, you know, the overriding concept of what I was saying is stand up straight and shut your mouth. When things go wrong, you could sum this up generally with, well, shut your mouth or the wind will change and your face will set like that. These, these are not new concepts. You know, these, these are, is, what we're doing really is reinventing the wheel. Now, I already had some lectures up 
giving some ideas of what I was doing. And I had lectures up of my exercises for my patients to save me saying it too many times. And the individual people saw what I was saying. They took the exercises I had online and they, they kicked it out the ballpark. I mean, literally out the ballpark, you know, the number of people who know about mewing now is it's incredible. It must be somewhere in the region of 10 to a hundred million people are actively aware and possibly actively trying to mew to, and this is that they came up with this term, basically using my functional therapy, good oral posture, good physical and body posture to try and improve your craniofacial structure. So you know, the best appliance is your tongue. And to most people, this sounds so frivolous. It sounds like, oh, that can't make a difference. But try cutting your trigeminal nerve. What's going to happen to one side of your face? Well, I mean, even just a stroke, just, just the surface muscles, you have a stroke, one side of your face is going to drop down. And that's just the muscles of facial expression. That's not the masseter. That's not the temporalis. I've seen those muscles cut off and the results are um, um, unbelievable. You know, one side of the face just melts away. And that's what we're saying. We're saying, and this is the, the deeply controversial thing, is that our faces have changed shape. And most people's faces in the modern world are not the right shape. We did not fulfill our genetic potential. And of course, the understanding once, if you're not previously polluted by an, an existing idea, then what, what we're saying makes common sense. It fits all the facts. There's all the research. The only way you can <clears throat> prevent this being proven right is not to engage in conversation. And that is the, I guess that's, that's what happens to new ideas in medicine. It's not the mm. first time, it won't be the last time. Yes, the, um, uh, the audience um, that has been attracted are highly motivated um, young adults who are now a generation where posture was not even a concept that they grew up with. Mm -hmm. And they're realizing they don't look anything like the movie stars on the screen. And they feel cheated um, by a culture that hasn't encouraged their physical development. You know, intellectually, we're smarter than every generation before us. Yes. But physically, we're deteriorating. We, we're deteriorating. We, yeah, yeah, de evil, you know, we, we it's devolve. not evolving, is it? It's it's just a de de physical degeneration, you know. Yeah. I, I remember, yeah, it, it's so, yeah, you know, Simon, when I was at school, if I walked along with my hands in my pockets, slouching, I'd get clipped around the ear hard <clears throat> by any prefect <laughs> or teacher, and you would jump up and they'd say, Hands out your pockets, hand behind your back, stand up straight now. What would happen to a teacher that did that now? Well, they'd be out on their area. It's a sort. Yeah. They'd be, um, you know, visiting the old Bailey. I mean, you know, it, it, we, we were denoting this as, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a shame. We, you know, we, there was many things we needed to throw out in the 1960s. We threw out racism, sexism, um, religious um, intolerance. They needed to go. But we also throw out this concept of, you know, it was ingrained in all cultures, all cultures. You, you know, the Victorians weren't just so, you know, sad, sadists. You know, they weren't just picking on their children for the sake of it. They really wanted their children to stand up straight. Mm, because they, the, the Victorian era was one of prosperity. And the those in those upper classes realized that their children were not physically active enough to themselves carry on developing well. So they had to create a culture that forced a child who was born with a silver spoon in their mouth yes, to be true. able to grow well. 
You know, but back then it was obvious, Simon, you know, when most people were growing relatively well, it was more obvious when the few didn't grow well. And then to focus on that and work out what was happening. And, you know, it was, you know, relatively obvious back then. Now, yeah, I mean, the, well, the, the, effect, like everyone's the office, affected. Yeah, exactly. The officers of uh, an army, for example, had to be trained to hold good posture, whereas the grunts, well, they did or they died. Yes. So we are now in an era where, you know, if our child can code on a laptop, that's more valuable than if they can run a four-minute mile. Yes. Yes. And, of course, you're that's going awesome. to get, you know, a big head and a little jaw. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, Simon, I'm very interested to hear from um, Susan and possibly even John on that. Um, yes. Yeah, so, Susan, what, what I wanted to ask you, Susan, yes, see, Mike my, my, my talked about how he had, uh, an, you know, drummed in from his father, eight is too late, but yet he had a 14 year old who was literally um, the ideal private in an army. Now, you have children who are now eight and ten. Hmm. How do children respond to strict discipline in today's world? How do eight and ten-year-olds respond to strict discipline? <laughs> Depends on the personality of the child, I would say. My, my children are chalk and cheese. So my firstborn would be, um, yes, yes. So you're, what you said, the private and the sergeant. Um, so, you know, if you want me to jump, I, I pretty much have to say to her um, in, a, in a stern tone that I, I expect her to have her bags packed in the morning. If she has something on, I expect her to know about it and that, you know, she's 10 now and, and, just that would just be a five minute talk and everything is done. <laughs> My second one, very different. So uh, we've just had some stern words about um, um, spending a bit too much time on the iPad. So, and, um, and I, I, I mean like planned uh, use, unauthorized use. So very, very, um, so I often think if he used his mind for working out how he use his iPad without being caught, he'd be a genius. If he just spent <laughs> that effort on something else, he'd be a genius on something else. So, um, yeah, he's eight and a half. And I, I often joke, you know, if, if um, in times of war, he'd be, he'd be a hero because he'd know how to survive and, um, you know, because he'd work his way around the system, right? Um, but my daughter, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mm. So, you know, one of, one of the things is that you've been treating your own children for yep. a number of years. Yep. And how has the cooperation been before eight and after eight? Mm. I started probably about uh, my child, my son, just before three. Um, and, and my daughter was four. I think before eight, what I said was gospel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I didn't, I, I, yeah, I think I have had to let go even more the older Susan, they are. What yeah. you're saying, it's, it's fascinating here. So mm -hmm. we're not saying it's not so much it's the physiology of mm -hmm. the individual, it's yeah. their personality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way, I often think we're treating personalities. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, and the parent. You've got to treat the parent yeah. too. And you, you treat the parents because we're, we're trying to motivate people to change. Mm. Oh, yeah. we, we can't do it all for them. Yep, yep. yep. And, and it's my modelling, right? So yes, yeah, any method yeah. you can do. And I, I'm going on about iPad time, right? And I'm on my phone a lot of the time. But I'm doing business, you know, I'm doing serious things. But still, like, yes. I'm not being able to model. So... You know, we yep. go on about <laughs> good old posture. I have to do it myself. So yes, that, that's, the front. Um, mm, that's been a real challenge. So, uh, yeah. Very much so. John, uh, John, John Flutter, I, I have a question for you. 
You've been teaching for four decades, and you've taught dentists of two or three generations now. What do you feel has been uh, different about you know each of the decades that you've taught, and how the dentists have responded to? Uh, carrying out instructions that are related to myofunctional therapy, postural, orthodont postural orthodontics, orthodontics, and orthotropics? Um, thanks for the opportunity to put in a couple of words. I'd just like to make a couple of points that aren't necessarily in direct answer to the question. Uh, um, I feel there's two things that I've, I've uh, contributed to this whole debate. And one is I do really feel, and it follows on from what you were saying before, is the key to this is getting children to do what you want them to do. And a large part of what I've been developing over the last 30 years is to develop an environment. I think this is really important that you have an environment in which children like to learn. And I've said repeatedly, uh, and I'll say it again, that Children do the homework for the teachers they like. And to create an environment where the child is not in a room with a dental chair, where they can relate to someone and be encouraged and supported, both the children and the family in a non-clinical environment, I think is an important key to delivering this program. The other thing I think I brought to this and brought an increasing awareness is the importance of uh, establishing nasal breathing. Uh, in particular, most adults that I know and most adults see breathe through their mouth when they do exercise. And if you breathe through your mouth when you do exercise, you're a mouth breather. As I'm fond of saying, if you watch a horse race, the jockey has his mouth open, but the horse has his mouth closed. And uh, if you want to establish good posture, then you need to keep your mouth closed all the time. Um, and then that includes uh, breathing through your nose uh, when you're doing exercise. The last point I'd like to make is about, we're going to talk about Mike's uh, uh, new webinar. One of the things I feel we're trying to model that on is the concept of what we call hard talk. That's a, a BBC program where Stephen Sacker asks difficult questions to people who pontificate about anything, particularly politicians. And I think one of my strengths in this podcast is not my knowledge I don't have as much knowledge as Mike on dentofacial orthopedics or uh, orthotropics, well, but I can ask him the questions uh, that makes him uh, really focus on uh, the, the points that I think need to be made. And I think this particular session has uh, illustrated the what's much more engaging for an audience is a conversation rather than a monologue. Yes, very much. Mm, very much so. So, so John, can you explain how people might log on, or how how do how are they going to find out about this podcast? Well, um, it's Mike's podcast, and uh, it's called Truth Bites, and uh, I'm there. What I'm really trying to do is to assist Mike in promoting what he does. Uh, and if we can talk about it even briefly, he does have this court case coming up later in the year. And we're trying to get as much public awareness as we can uh, to get the idea that malocclusions aren't an unfortunate genetic accident. And what people can do about them. Mm -hmm. Is this podcast streamed on YouTube or there's a there's a separate you know, podcast? No, no we will be. But this will be going out on the Orthotropic YouTube channel. Okay, good. All right. So I put that link for everyone to subscribe, and you'll get notified yeah, it, when it, it, this, this, our YouTube channel has been an absolute runaway success. Oh, incredible! It, you know, yeah. it, 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 it's amazing when you look at the physical numbers because I've seen I've been in this non-mainstream orthodontic world for many years. Well, I'm second generation in this area. And we all talk about getting the message out there. And this, our YouTube channel has been an unmitigated success. You know, way more numbers. You know, I, I remember looking at this icon, this, this is a symbol on my the, the back end of the YouTube channel. And I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. And it says copyright infringements. 
And I was like, oh, I'll have a look at that. I pressed the button and I had 20, something like 50 pages of copyright infringements. I went through them and I'm seeing people copying my entire video mm. into various different languages. And there was so many, I, I didn't even recognize these languages. I'd know, I expect this like the Spanish and you know, clearly Chinese or Japanese or some of these languages I didn't recognize. But when then you see the number of videos, number of hits that I've got in a dubbed version in all these different languages, that mm. blew my mind. And then when, you know, I walk in London, I'm regularly stopped on streets, in restaurants, <laughs> in supermarkets, on the train, um, in, in, in the gym. And be stopped. Remember, this is a global phenomena. So if I'm being stopped in London, in theory, I'd be stopped in Sydney, in Melbourne, in New York, in um, hmm. Tokyo, basically anywhere, because it is global. It's going to be the same level of global penetration anywhere. And as I say, you know, you, you know, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Nothing can stop a message whose time has come. And the time has come for this message. One thing Simon sent was there were a lot of very upset teens because young individuals, because they weren't told that literally good posture at a young age could be so profound. <clears throat> but more than that, they were often pushed into treatments they didn't want to do by their parents, and then they're, they're not very happy about that. And we're not talking a few people, we're talking big chunks of the global population. And we, all, all I've been calling for is debate. It's all we've been calling for. We just want to be included in the scientific process. You know, we're widely um, judged to be wrong. And I guess if you say something often enough, it sticks, but please, Anyways, we've never, ever been proven wrong. We've just been excluded from the argument. We've been excluded from the debate. And I spent a campaign asking for people to have a debate about why teeth were crooked. This is, you know, I went I, I, on and on and on. I wrote to everyone. I've exhausted all the possible avenues asking what is clearly the most simple thing What's the cause of the problem you're treating? Because if you don't understand the cause of the problem, and it's widely acknowledged within the orthodontic speciality that they don't, then we should have a debate about it because we're treating kids. And what they say is it's multifactorial. And if you say it's you multifactorial, don't know. then that's a, an excuse to do nothing, I think. It's multifactorial. It's too difficult. We don't do anything about it. I can be brushed under the carpet. Mm, it's um, we just need debate. We, we don't um, tend as a profession to focus on causes and prevention, and um, you know we we want that to change. So um, I, I hope uh, those who are watching and those who will watch the recordings. We'll join Mike and John and myself in the upcoming uh, Orthotropics uh, channel podcast and uh, for you guys to subscribe to that channel and to look at all the previous videos that um, John Muir and Mike have put out um, in um, their campaign to share um, posture uh, as the etiology of uh, malocclusion and also the cure of malocclusion. So yeah. I wanted to retention uh, is not a cure. Absolutely, it's a it, it's you know it's a band aid that you have to keep replacing. Yeah, just, you know, we did prompt a short Q and A session. If if every everyone here could stay for a few more minutes, I think there'll be yes. some questions coming through. If if that's okay, so thank you all. Um, if you'd like to submit a question. For uh, anyone, there is a special Q&A section that you can just click on that chat thing and type it in there rather than the general chat, but you could type it in the chat box as well. So thank you, Jim, for your comments. I always like listening to each of you, always pick up new ideas. Any other questions for anyone here, Professor John Mew, Mike Mew, Susan or John? Uh, you know, we'll... Esty, John, spending a weekend at your Melbourne... Sorry, Esty, you didn't... Uh, quite follow maybe you spent a weekend Esty Bab. hello Esty 
Oh, there you go. Oh, you're referring to Dr. Flutter. All right, terrific. All right, anyone else with any comments or question? A uh, question has come through. Mary Paul, how many of the people on the panel regularly work with SLPs and myofunctional therapists? What's an SLP? SLP, now remind me with these acronyms. S- S- yes. S- S- speech lingual pathologist. All right. Speech lingual Okay, so I've, I've, I've trained someone in-house to what I want specifically. I, I love John Flutter's comment. What's the best exercise? It's the one that they do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All those exercises they don't do, they're not very useful. And I think that I, I love Simon. Simon is, um, you know, he, he's got great foresight. And some of his concepts on patient selection and how to make someone do this 30 day trial of doing something every single day for 30 trials and they miss a day, you're not coming on my clinic. And I think right now, that's the only way we can hold back, you know, because any any myofunctional therapist who's got some exercises can implement those exercises, but getting the child finding the right child that's going to do those exercises, that's probably more important than the specific exercises or who it is you get to treat them. Um, I I tend to find that that speech lingual pathologists are fantastic for dealing with dysfunction of swallowing, of speech, Uh, but they, but our focus is on posture which is a different animal. And, um, you know, I've created my book, uh, Good Oral Posture Exercises, and a series of very simple exercises that are basically based on speaking manners and table manners. And uh, like Mike, I, I've created my own in-house. I, that, that was, it, it, Simon, that was absolutely inspiring. <clears throat> Trying to make so you know, I, I describe your concepts to people because I say to them, you know, it's if I, I say that if you did a 10 minute brisk walk every day, we know that that's going to reduce your chance of getting heart attacks. We you know it's good, good, good literature. You 10 minute brisk walk every day. It's, it's amazing how much that will change things. So I then say to them, well, if we could get a child to do a situational specific exercise for 30 to 40 minutes every day from a young age, that would be utterly profound. Now, when are we using our mouth? When are we using this complex? Well, when we're eating. And those old rules, sit up straight, eat with your mouth shut, chew your food properly. You know, if you can do that, that's all the low-lying fruit from myofunctional therapy or um, speech and language pathology. You've yeah. got your low-lying fruit. And this isn't a new idea. The, from the Victorians to Confucius, they were saying the same thing. Yeah. And, you know, um, speaking manners. Understanding the concept of a full stop. What do you do in a full stop? What, do you, what are you supposed to do? Well, how about you shut your mouth and breathe through your nose? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's truly inspired all of that, you know, but also I liked your way of patient selection because you, people talk, go on and on and on about how you motivate a child. As we've talked, as Susan put forward, some child you're going to struggle to motivate. And when you're we, we're in, in a situation like what, where we are at the moment, you're going to have to select the right patient to do this. You can't do this on anyone. The, the reality is... In any non-mainstream therapy, the clinician who provides non-mainstream therapy has only one choice, and that choice is they can only succeed. They cannot fail. Yes, you cannot risk failing. You cannot fail. You do not have the option of failure. So you have to be very, very, very brutal with your diagnosis and case selection because it's your license on the line when you very much so 
And that, that, that's what I'm finding in November with these court cases. I mean, I find myself in what I consider, in my personal opinion, to be a crazy situation. Because there's no one there to back you up. And it's not a fair fight if you don't have experts for your defence. And that's why we're looking to change. There's no way to change one thing. We have to try and check, gain a, a global change in thinking and perspective. Definitely. And a coalition amongst everyone here and others. Yes. You know, on this mission. Yeah. And a question oh, from you. Stuart Hopkins. Uh, when's the next IAFGG symposium? Indeed, it's Poland, September 22nd. Mike and Professor yes. John Mew and Simon yep. will be presenting there. I put the link. Tickets are on sale, of course, so it's only three months away, literally. Yeah, yeah. but if you, if you want to know about this, this, you know, we want to get on board this science, that's a great place to go, to be there in Poland. Three months. Terrific. Any other questions? Other it's questions short, coming? Um, um, it's just that <clears throat> we're talking about converting <clears throat> orthodontists. I actually think we should convert the public <laughs> it is uh, where I'm focusing at the moment. <laughs> um, the more I try and convert the public, I think that is where the change will come from in the end. Sorry about my voice. <laughs> Absolutely. Get some water there, definitely, as well, John. Yes, I, I agree. That's why the YouTube channel, I think, you know, <clears throat> we need to spread that, you know, just it has incredible content, not just for dentists, but obviously the lay, you know, the average, the lay person. Another question from Adnan Anwar. For someone who has been a chronic mouth breather now in their 40s, is surgery, MSC, dome, aga, AGGA, the only option for class two overjet malocclusion and sleep disorders, or are there natural postural and mewing exercises that can help? Assuming natural approaches are slow. So, Mike or Simon? Simon? Well, everything is um, how high are you aiming? Because um, you can do natural things and make changes. But, you know, what, how big a change are you after? You know, how, how consistently do you want that change to be predictable? Uh, are you doing it for yourself? Are you trying to treat other people? See, if you're working on yourself, you can do whatever you like. But if you're working on someone else who is a 40-year-old, who, who is a chronic mouth breather, uh, and they're paying you for that service, then how predictable do you think the outcome will be if you don't use surgery, if you um, are using techniques that are designed specifically for growing children. Um, it, it's a matter of um, deciding, do you want to practice orthotropics, postural orthodontics, orthodontics as a professional or as a hobby? Because if you want to do it as a hobby, then by all means, try whatever you feel is uh, appropriate for your mood but if you want an outcome that is going to be predictable then you have to set goals that are realistic that are not only realistic but are consistently predictable and one of the things that um, we're trying to do is um, have people take on their own responsibility so if they want to change using mewing techniques using improvement in uh, postural exercises, you, we would encourage anyone to try to change themselves. But I would discourage people from seeking professional help in unrealistic expectations. And I would counsel against clinicians attempting to do things that may Fail. Yeah. 
What I would I say in response to that, one thing I'd say in response to the question about the breathing is that you can establish nasal breathing at any age. I was grew up as an habitual mouth breather, which is why I've got a bilateral cross posterior crossbite and probably the worst malocclusion of anybody on this panel. And at age 50, I established nasal breathing for myself. And uh, although the dental changes have been minor, there's definitely been dental changes, but the health changes have been really significant. I mean, nasal breathing is the normal human physiological pattern, and uh, I believe you can establish that at any age. Yeah, true. Um, So uh, clearly I've been been talking to quite a lot of people who have been trying to gain self-improvements with the mewing phenomena. Now, as a a general rule, I will say under 25, it's much more possible to gain change than over 25. Whether that's a, the the neural system or the physical system being harder to change, I don't know. So, you know, we become creatures of habit, but also we've got to remember that the structure that you have was influenced by your posture and function. So the the old posture and function is most comfortable with your current structure. So in a way you have this muscle memory or neural memory or whatever that is, but you also have this physical memory, which is the structure that you currently have. And that often makes it very hard to change. And I think sometimes little bits of assistance correctly used can be very beneficial for you. Let's say a bit of arch expansion, per se. As long as that arch expansion doesn't make it uncomfortable to chew together, because then you're making more space, but you're, you're, you're inhibiting the jaw muscles which is counterproductive. If you do surgery, you do effective surgery, well-planned, like we were discussing, then this gives you an instant, sudden, dramatic change. And people sometimes respond better to these dramatic changes. I reminded myself of the frog in the uh, boiling water. You know, you throw a frog into a boiling water, it jumps straight out. You slowly boil, the t- t- you slowly increase the temperature of the water and the frog will die because it gets cooked because it's imperceivable changes. Sometimes we respond well to a big change. And sometimes I think surgery can really help this because surgery allows for a sudden dramatic change in form that will help you gain a thought change in structure and in, in function and posture. So we're, we're thinking, Form and function are related to each other. Posture is function over time. And so all of these things are intricately related to each other. And of Another course, question. The, the caveat, of course, is that the surgery has to be done by someone who creates the right doing. structure. And then after the surgery, someone who understands posture has to train you to use that new space wisely. Yes. So um, yes. that that's the problem. And you've got to do it. And then you then you have to. And want don't to do stop it. here. Standing up, you know, stand up straight and shut your mouth. Good body posture really helps. But I often see this jaw here. The maxilla is the keystone in a postural train that runs through your body. And we're only at working, you know, particularly in adults. We're only working on one element. There's only certain etiological things that we could affect in one area of the body in a bigger problem. But often, and this is reflecting what John said, the number of letters I get from people who are saying, one point, thank you for for an understanding. They, They just want to know why they've got these problems. And I get these emails saying, thank you for that. And then I get people saying, thank you. You know, they're saying I didn't get any great facial changes. You know, I'm in my 40s or 50s, but my TMDs, my jaw joint problems have finished. And my, and my nasal drip's gone. My All of these random little things, you know, this the, the bunches of mails we get from people just saying thank you. 
because you can gain, you know, even without gaining dramatic structural change, you can get significant health improvements. Absolutely. Fantastic. So I wanted to, to oh, thank uh, our guests for their thank time you tonight. Um, thank you, Mike, Susan, John, and John. And um, uh, hopefully you will uh, join us uh, all in um, next month's uh, two-day postural orthodontic session, July 16th and 17th. And even if you feel that's not the right fit for you, please do consider buying John Mew's book, The Cause and Cure of Malocclusion. And, and can, Simon, can I just say one thing I think is important? I'm not doing any teaching at the moment. You know, I've got other big, you know, as you know this in November court case, me trying to get this YouTube channel working, trying to get the information out there. I, I'm not doing teaching. I don't have the bandwidth for that. That's Simon. And when I get back into teaching, I'm very likely to only take people who have already done a course like Simon's course. Because, I, you know, so I don't suffer fools well and I don't want to be teaching the basics. You know, if you want to get on and do, you know, come to my clinic, see what I'm doing. Well, listen, if you've done Simon's course, the doors are going to be more open for you than if you haven't. Absolutely. But do join Mike on his YouTube channel, um, orthotropics.com. Um, subscribe and uh, hit the notification button and you'll get the latest from John Mew and Mike Mew's um, monologues. About yeah. Oh, yeah. Simon, I don't have your patience. You know, you, you, you do teach very well. So um, please, you know, I highly recommend Simon. He is just, you know, he's got the patience of a saint. You know, I, I would, I'd be gone with a lot of, you know, thank you, Simon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but uh, do stay on with Cam and he'll talk to you a little bit more about the promotion that's available and um, how you can get a copy of John Mew's book. Um, as part of um, the uh, entrance uh, for our course. All right. Thank you, all our wonderful panellists and guests, Mike, Susan, John, and John. Thanks so good evening to you all. Thank you. I'll stay on okay. just for five or ten. Thank you all. You can. Okay. I, I, I need to go. I'm late for an appointment. Yes. Thank you, Mike, and everyone. Thank you so no, I'll just continue. Thank you very much, by, by all means, everyone else needs to head off to other things and I'll, I'll just stay on for a few more minutes to answer any questions related to the course there's still about 50 people here you get a copy of professor john mew's book uh directly uh, under, uh here on orthotropics.com forward slash shop um the uh event organized uh the next iafgg in poland uh for those of you who can travel uh september 22nd as you can see here Professor John Mew will be opening. Dominic is the organizer uh, in Poland. Uh, Marissa, uh, you've also got Mike Mew, and Simon will be the last speaker. And he's doing a special extra one day uh, event uh, for those who are interested in, in doing a one day live event with Simon at, on the 25th, on the, on the last day. So um, head over there. You can click on English to get all that info. But the, uh, the next event that is coming up uh, is our two-day intro to partial orthodontics. So if you have any questions uh, related to um, the two-day event, but firstly, it's our, we just do this once a year. It's the main two-day event uh, to go into depth about postural orthodontics, which is Simon's um, uh, flagship course to get into early intervention. Uh, it's a very comprehensive course. We include um, from published articles to there's over a thousand uh, slides. We give you every single slide covered over the two days and practice manuals and templates. It's designed not to be just an intro where you, you know, need advanced courses uh, necessarily to, to, to implement, we've taken a different approach. We are giving you the recordings uh, of the event. And uh, if you want to get the uh, premium ticket, then you get the recordings from last year's 
event and this year's event as well. So you can, in indefinite access. So we say two years, but so long as we're in the practice of, you know, in the, in the business of teaching still, we will uh, give you indefinite access to the recordings. There is an online community of over 220 to 230 uh, like-minded airway-centric practitioners who have gone through at least the two-day intro. Um, and a lot of people who have an orthodontic base is well, who's it for, right? So predominantly the general dentists joining, but clinicians with an existing understanding of functional orthopedics and orthodontic fundamentals. So you might've started a POS through EOD, EODO or uh, something equivalent. Um, and if you, uh, so it's, it's not for those who, who have no background in orthodontic fundamentals. So that that's important. There's over 29 hours of recorded training already. If you join with the premium ticket, um, because not only do we give you last year's recordings, but we give you additional eight or nine hours of recorded Q and a bonus Q and a sessions we did. Um, a couple of years ago related to the two-day intro. So as you can see here, you know, in July, it would be 1600 US for a premium ticket with the recordings. Right now it's 1400, prices will go up end of June, but we do have a special just for tonight. Um, for those of you, there's still 40 of you on, so I guess you're interested. So if you want to join, you've been thinking about joining, uh, join tonight, you get uh, 250 off the um, current prices, but it's like 350, uh, 450 off July prices if you left it till July. Uh, and you get the free book. You get John's uh, latest edition of The Cause and Cure of Malocclusion, which retails for 190 odd US dollars, 150 pounds, quid. Uh, so there's a few different options you can select from. If you don't want the book because you already have a copy, uh, then it's just 997. Or you can do five monthly payments of 220, spread it over five months. Uh, or you can get the book as well, and we'll ship it to you, uh, all covered, for the price of just 1150. And that includes GST if you're listening from Australia. Uh, so this is in inclusive of the 10% GST. So everything you get the two day event live stream, the recordings of the event, the recordings from last year's event. All comes with a money unconditional money back guarantee on uh, uh, until the end of day two. So you can literally go through the recordings, go through the two day event, and then if it, if you decide it's not really for you or for whatever reason, uh, we'll issue you a full guarantee of the nine nine seven portion. The book, you know, don't ship the book back. Let's keep the book. Um, we won't refund the book side of things, which costs us roughly one hundred and fifty or so. Uh, that's a special pricing we're getting uh, for the bulk uh, promotional offer that we've been doing for a few weeks now. Or you can get the book and spread that over five payments of two fifty. All right. So any questions related to uh, the uh, two day course? This is will be our last promotional webinar before um, the event. Well, that's that's all we've scheduled. We might. Yeah, I, yeah. This is probably the last uh, event we'll do to promote the event. If you've got questions related to the event, now's the time to um, ask them. If you're still here, still forty or so of you guys on, so I'll stay on. And thank you, Stuart, for your comments. Thank you, Adnan, for making mewing cool. <laughs> thank you, Esty, for your comments. Awesome panel of stars, such a wealth of wisdom. Um, Selma, uh, I think we didn't get a chance to answer your question. If you're still on, thanks for the webinar. Please, can you speak about the environmental factors driving this epidemic of malocclusion and incorrect craniofacial development? I'm not a professional. Uh, I would recommend you go on uh, Dr. Mike Mew's YouTube channel, which we posted in the chat section. You can just go to youtube.com and type up orthotropics. So she'll give you the exact link one more time. Here you go. So, so Selma, if you're still on, you can uh, visit this website. Uh, it's a whole range of factors. I am not a dentist, so I'm not going to get into that, but it's a whole range of things, posture being one of them, uh, mouth open uh, in, in children who 
you know, I, I've had to learn a lot about this, obviously, because I'm in charge of the marketing and, and uh, promotional efforts for Simon, uh, as you've been receiving emails from us and doing all the copy on the website. So I have learned a few things, but go to the websites, uh, as mentioned, download my brother's book for free. You can learn about good oral posture exercises. Um, you can see the literally hundreds of videos that Mike Mew has uploaded over the last seven, eight years. Um, so you can search by topic and, you know, it's a fascinating journey. It's a combination of posture and thumb sucking and bad, you know, pollute from all the way from, you know, pollution and, you know, keeping our stuffy noses. So we have to breathe through the mouth and that becomes a habit and our jaws are open and it just ruins our posture. And uh, over time, incrementally, it results in weaker jaws that are not growing to its full potential. And if it's not growing properly, guess what? All your 32 teeth or whatever are not having enough space. So if you don't grow your jaws to its full genetic potential, uh, because you're not exercising, you're not chewing solid foods properly, we're chewing processed, mushy food all the time, watching YouTube iPads at the same time, swallowing before we chew properly. All this weakens our, our developmental areas here, not having enough space partly and thus getting crowding, thus getting crooked teeth. Soft, mushy diet comprised of nuggets and burgers is Adnan, absolutely. And also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, not being able to be breastfed you know, over an extended period of time. A lot of parents, a lot of mothers uh, have to go to work and the stresses of today's modern living, both parents have to pay off the mortgage. Was that the case to a decade, a, a few decades ago, a generation ago? You know, this has all come about, it's a conspiracy theory to destroy the family and the family unit, who knows, right? We're noticing a lot of societal changes, cultural problems, societal problems. And by not breastfeeding, my understanding, you, you, that suction motion really strengthens the young infant's jaw. Tell me, I mean, there's other dentists still on this. That's part of the uh, is, you know, whole range of factors, environmental factors, resulting in you know, not develop, uh, the jaws not properly being developed and uh, having enough space for the teeth to grow. That's my layman's understanding. Makes sense, right? If you're not chewing properly, strength, you know, the jaws are not developed properly through bad. And the jaws are two separate bones, apparently. I thought they were connected. And if they don't, you know, they don't grow together if they're not resting properly in, uh, in, in rest posture. So if your mouth is always open, they don't kind of grow together. It's when do we grow the most? When we're sleeping, when our infants are sleeping, our children are sleeping, we know the more they sleep, the more they grow, hopefully. And likewise, that when the jaws are resting in posture throughout the day, not just when you're sleeping, but throughout the day, they're resting. And if you're not speaking or eating, you should keep them closed and the tongue pushing the top of them, the, the roof of the mouth. And thus it's going to grow together more symmetrically. If you're slightly off, it will start growing slightly off and you're not symmetrical and that's not perfectly beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. And also to Adnan, thank you for saving me here. The natural suction helps child train for nasal breathing, right? So when they're, they're sucking, they have to breathe through their nose. I had shocking teeth. You know, when I was 13, my brother wasn't a dentist then. He was only four years older. Um, I refused to have all my teeth pulled. You know, I said, I just want one teeth pulled out. Thank goodness I didn't have my wisdom teeth pulled out. So I have shocking teeth. I'm on was on television quite a bit in the US doing um, pro bono work in nonprofit, but I kind of regretted not having my, uh, you know, braces and everything. But thank God after I learned what I learned that, uh, you know, putting on braces would have, you know, impacted, you know, by pulling out teeth and then artificially constricting to line things up and close the gaps. Guess what? My, my, my mouth area is reduced. My tongue is you know, uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, you know, resulting in all this sleep apnea problems because the tongue is not resting properly. It's falling back. There's not enough space in my mouth if I pulled all my teeth out and it results in this billion dollar sleep apnea problem, if I'm not mistaken, right? So a lot of health issues as a result of pulling teeth out, um, you know, to, to just straighten them up. You know, it's not necessarily, if we can start early and prevention is always a better cue, but you can guide that. That's the whole 
idea of orthotropics and postural orthodontics to guide the growth in, in its optimal fashion. And it makes sense. Our bones are the most pliable before we, we hit puberty, especially seven, eight. How, you know, we break a bone, we heal in a few, a few weeks or a month or two versus if you did that today, you know, at, at 40 or 50 or whatever, it's a lot, you know, a lot harder to, to, um, to fix. So anyway, so that's uh, my kind of two cents worth to answer your rough question there. But by all means, go to the experts, um, you know, the cause and cure of malocclusion. Get a copy of John's book. Um, Professor Sandra Khan came up with Jaws. The, the epi- uh, is another great book, Jaws Epidemic. Uh, the story of a hidden epidemic. It's, uh, she's the co-author of GOPEX with Simon on, on one of the other books. But this is also a great book, Jaws, the story of a hidden epidemic. Uh, plenty of other books, I'm sure, that will be recommended as soon as you start Googling that. All right. So I um, highly recommend you join if you like to learn more about early intervention orthodontics. Um, join tonight. All right. You've got a full, you know, three, four weeks to decide whether it's for you. Get instant access to the recordings. Um, join our community online and um, get access to the slides, the practice templates, et cetera, and uh, start your journey with Simon and uh, Professor John Muir, who'll be there as well, uh, giving a formal one-hour presentation on day two. Uh, and uh, Dr. Perry Burst, the ENT surgeon, will be presenting, uh, ear, no, ear, nose, throat surgeon, Dr. Susan Sher on, on her tale of her two thumb-sucking kitties, and uh, the progress that's been made over the last few years working with Simon, um, et cetera. We do, of course, have an advanced program. And the advanced program uh, is mentioned on the main website. Just go to forward slash advanced, and you can learn more about the online training, group calls, Zoom. You can visit Simon's practice, et cetera, et cetera, different um, live streams as well. Uh, So there is a full multi-year journey if you want to go down that route. All right. If it's just for interest, by all means, a lot of people want to, you know, 70% of people just stop there. They attend the two-day intro, but 20 to 30% end up joining the advanced programs because they want to get obviously a lot more training uh, from Simon. He does, um, he doesn't do off the bat online consultations. A lot of people reach out and say, can you please critique or give us advice on my, this particular patient or my daughter or my son's case? That's uh, out of the scope until you're committed to go through a set of, you know, initial advanced courses and you want to join the one-year mentoring program, which can be renewed every three months, where you can submit your cases online in a HIPAA-compliant environment to Simon, and he will critique and do one-on-one effectively. He will write back to you and give you his feedback um, on your case. So you can submit your CEF analysis, you can submit you know, x-rays, photos, that's part of the advanced mentoring program. I won't get into it all now, but obviously, you know, we've thought through how do we replicate what Simon has learned over 30 years, the last 16, 15, 16 years in particular in early intervention. Um, So we're going to start with a two-day intro. There's advanced courses, hundreds of hours of online training, literally, that we've recorded um, over the last two years. So, if you really want to go in depth and master this process, you know, we know that it's each one teach one or teach 10 or 20 um, people at an at a in-depth level mentored um, over a number of years. And then hopefully they will then also teach the next batch. So it's going to be a generational thing. Professor Mu is 94. You know, he's incredible. 94 and he's still um, teaching whenever he can. So Simon, my brother's 54. Um and, you know, he knows he's got many decades left to, to share what he's learned from his predecessors. Thank you, Michael, for joining. Um, those of you, I'll just put, uh, thank you for joining us, Stephen. There's a few people who joined us with, and um, we'll ship you your books, um, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, so just uh, let me just, oh, let me get to the... Uh, the link one more time if there are no other questions i will wrap up and bid you adieu okay if you have any questions you can email me privately on straight 
teeth naturally. Uh, those of you who've attended before, um, you can email me. Uh, we do have refresher rates as well. So I think it's only uh, three, 400 US, depending whether you want the recordings or not. So those of you who want to attend the two-day event and get the recordings uh, as a refresher, because you attended last year or the year before when we first started this uh, journey, um, just email me and ask for the refresher rate. So which is either, I think, 297 or 397 uh, with or without the recordings. Um, so I know some of your familiar faces who've joined before. Um, still 30 of you guys here. So the panel discussion is aimed towards practitioners, two-day event. Yes, the two-day event in July is aimed towards um, anyone who wants to learn about early intervention. And uh, if you visit our main website, you'll um, learn more about it. Uh, you can understand, you know, it's for general practitioners, dentists, um, clinicians with, um, so this two-day intro to early intervention, if you want to learn postural orthodontics. So what is the key difference between orthotropics and postural orthodontics? Well, the, if I was to summarize it, orthotropics as pioneered by Professor Muse can, you know, you can be, you know, you could be dealing with severe malocclusions. Right, it's using bioblock certain techniques that uh, you know uh, can be um, quite difficult to treat. So Simon, in recognition of seeing what's been happening over you know fifteen years of his research in this area, realized it's better to just focus on early intervention on children on average below younger than eight, seven, six, ideal age to start, but from three to ten, you know, he's, he's started treatments. With children anywhere from you know as young as three and as old as 10 or 11 but ideal age to start is less younger than eight you know seven six six or seven and um so that and also to treat being very selective and that's the key you're not treating every patient who comes through your door wanting this type of treatment because some of if it's a severe malocclusion it may be beyond it may be something you may not want to try as the first case. Makes sense. A lot of people jump into cases wanting to save everyone, uh, but case selection is critical. To start off, if you're new to this early intervention, this is where postural orthodontics focuses on um, not severe malocclusion, milder malocclusions, and you know, using certain appliances, et cetera, for roughly an 18-month treatment plan. Right now, orthotropics you know, with severe malocclusion uh, where you can be treating severe malocclusions as well, that could be a three to four year journey, right? And you can get apparently uh, stuck in the middle uh, if you're not careful, if you really... So Simon's goal is to ease people into orthotropics if they want to, you know, treat that 20 to 30% of the population have severe... Out of everyone who's got, you know, malocclusions... There's that 80-20 you know, rule, right? The universal 80-20 rule, roughly 20%, 20-30% have severe malocclusions. My, my brother Simon would say, don't go there initially. Don't try to treat those, right? Just apply what he calls the postural orthodontics techniques, which are based on orthotropic principles, but he has a different, slightly different set of widgets of appliances that he's developed in conjunction with, you know, the mu stage one and other things that you can use um, so our approach is a more conservative approach. My brother says he's not very brave. He's not going to tackle the really difficult problems, nor is he going to encourage you to tackle the really difficult cases off the bat. So partial orthodontics is a kind of like a segue into teaching you the, the, the foundational training you, can, you need and you can implement straight away. Literally, if you've got orthodontic foundational training already, you should be able to take the appliances. You, can, should, you will know where to order the appliances. You will know how to utilize the appliances. We'll give you the recordings and all the additional material you're going to need. But anyone who is relatively new to all this and wants that additional training and support and mentoring from Simon can get it through our various advanced programs, which I won't go into depth right now. You can check it out on forward slash advanced if you want. It's obviously multiple thousands of dollars to join those programs. Uh, but the advanced, this is the two-day intro over a two-day period plus additional four months of coaching inside 
the Facebook closed group just for paid attendees, you, you can get in as low as 997 without the book or 1150 with Professor John Mew's book, All right? Uh, so Simon doesn't take mature age patients. He does not. His whole practice is early intervention only. All right. So we get this question a lot. Thank you for bringing it up, Dr. Anwar. He only treats young children. And that's his specialty. That's why he's considered, if I may say so myself as a brother, I'm biased, but even Professor Muse and Mike Muse and many others would attest he's one of the best, if not the best in, 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 in currently in focusing on treating early uh, intervention children from three to 10. We are not aware of any other practices that probably are who just focus on early intervention using orthotropic work. Um, and he's achieved that level of competency. It's, his 150 cases was, have been submitted to A&M Texas University. The, one of, Peter Bushang is one of the most the well-known orthodontic researchers in the world. And he's currently leading the research paper that should be published shortly. It's already been two years. Uh, should be hopefully published in a year or two. It takes time uh, to do all the research. Um, but he is leading that research with Simon's um, work based on Simon's orthotropic work. And uh, also Alberta University, also one of the most respected orthodontic um, university research houses. So, you know, why we're so excited to work with Professor uh, John and Mike Mew. And it's a, it's a two-pronged approach, right? We want to gain that public awareness and Mike's YouTube channel is doing that. At the same time, we need the research houses, the academic world to recognize Professor John Mew's orthotropic work. And my, Simon has been the most diligent out of all practitioners to document the hundreds of his consecutively treated cases um, and has submitted it for research. And we're not aware of anyone else who has submitted such a comprehensive list of cases with all the x-rays and photos and stuff from beginning of the treatment to the end of the treatment. And so we can show significant, statistically significant results for changing uh, facial, you know, facial growth guidance and so on. So hopefully that will validate a lot more of, uh, you know, the orthodontic community, as you know, would be very hesitant to, uh, jump on this bandwagon, you know, partly eating their lunch. They're just treating children from 12, 13 onwards, you know, and, you know, but it's, it's at the end of the day, we're not, we want to work within the system. We, Simon says we want to, you know, teach enough dentists to help with this early intervention technique, partial orthodontics, where it doesn't require hugely, you know, by a block penalty appliances, which are difficult to, uh, to gain compliance but a process where they can get it to a very good result in 18 months. And then if the dentist wants to, then if, if the parents want to ref, go to an orthodontist to finish it off or make some minor changes when they're 12 or 13, then we, that's how we can work within the system. There is a place for early intervention, you know, and done in a safe manner where you're not trying to tackle really complicated cases that require very strict uh, and difficult appliances to be implemented for children. These penalty appliances that Simon had mentioned about. And um, so it's a fascinating journey. It's, you know, we're fighting the establishment to a degree, but we're at the same time trying to work within the establishment to say, this is validated by science. It's been validated by science for a few decades already in different capacities. Simon's uh, applied what he's learned from John and others into a system that is now being validated by science that certain outcomes can be achieved if X, Y, Z is done, right? So it's, it's, it's we're trying to create awareness through social media, which uh, that's my background. I do a lot of marketing for nonprofit media and we've got hundred million fans around the world, which we're gonna be promoting a lot of Mike's work, Professor John's work, my brother's work, when the time comes to you know, spread all the, all the validated scientific research, uh, but we're trying to get out to the audiences out there, these free books that people can download, share it with your patients, simple exercises, you know, get parents to buy the jaws, you know, hit an epidemic, get parents to subscribe to um, Orthotropics YouTube channel, you know, be part of the movement. You know, this will take probably a generation or two, um, but hopefully in, you know, at least in my, in our lifetime, we'll, we'll see some, some, validation about growth guidance 
and uh, the importance of posture again that has been part of our culture for many many generations and and less so recent generation so hopefully that answers your question about um what does simon do he's full-time uh early intervention practice all right so any other final questions still 20 odd people here shout out to albert and some kathy chi feza jolanta casey if you're still here say hello uh, nick lippis welcome um patricia stefan susan viet yvette hi anson and a few folks from taiwan as well so welcome welcome so any other final questions glad i'm not talking to thin air sometimes you never know right you just people could have walked off grab their head off to grab a tea or coffee or supper so i'm glad you guys are still on any other questions you have for me happy to stay on i'm in new york so it's 9 a.m here so this is morning time so happy to chit chat any other questions about the event about what my brother was like growing up with him <laughs> i joke about that no he's very strict that's why he's very disciplined and uh and that's that's what you we need if you you know if you want this type of facial growth guidance and so on and put on these appliances that that what he calls penalty appliances because if you open your mouth it kind of hurts it kind of keeps your mouth shut and that's designed for the bioblock treatment for um the more severe malocclusion type of cases thanks for the info greetings from tazzy i haven't been to tasmania i love the tasmanian scallop scallop kind of even pronounce scallop pies i do miss them we can't get them in new york um they they're so good if you ever get a chance to visit tasmania they have the best pies scallop pies and some from melbourne I haven't been back to melbourne where i grew up for a, almost a decade so melbourne who can we refer to uh, as a mature age patient that follows orthotropic pr premises and principles good question i will ask simon that question um are you based in melbourne dr anwar um uh, I'll ask Simon that question. He's off now. He's probably going to bed. Uh, question. Participant. Um, I'll, uh, if you send me an email, I will respond to this question because I'll wait for Simon. I'm not aware of anyone um, in Melbourne who treats mature age patients with orthotropic and and here's the thing, all right? And Simon will keep on stressing this, and um, he doesn't advise it. He's, he's he's heard of too many cases where you know the results are, are dubious and problematic, and because uh, it's difficult, you know, you don't have you know the benefit of the the child's natural growth patterns to help you know with guide guiding the, the 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 development of the jaw so that's why he does not you know a lot of people still want to you know uh, treat author, you know using orthotropics um with mature adults and simon refuses to do it because he knows how complicated and difficult that is and he would rather you refer folks to surgeons if if a you are willing to go through full surgery and it costs fifty thousand plus i believe so it's very expensive. Um, so yeah, anyway, so yes, I'm not a doctor. I've seen one of too many mewing videos and come across as medically trained, but what about is what about Dr. Derek who's endorsing on straight to natural work? Yes, Derek Mahoney has been um, super supportive of us in the last few years. Um, you might have received an email from him endorsing our events and webinars. So terrific. Well, thank you for joining still. Um, any other questions? Otherwise, um, so here's my email. But if, if you have friends or, you know, some people who need some treatment, I'll ask Simon, um, see what he says, if there is any, uh, anyone he knows that, that treats adults using all the tropics, but uh, I doubt he... Uh, I haven't heard of any, but anyway, no harm asking. Any other final questions? I think that's about it. So I do encourage you, if you're even half interested, attend our event. You can make a decision whether it's for you or not. And this is the 
cheapest it will ever be with the book thrown in as a free bonus. Um, straightdnaturally.com forward slash webinar special. Um, the special will be available for, you know, we'll keep it for a few more hours. Thank you, Anwar, and thank you all for attending. And uh, Kathy, I think I got your email. Oh, so I think someone's messaged me. So, yes, Kathy, I will reply via WhatsApp. All right, terrific. Thank you all. Good night. Take care. And hopefully we'll see you in mid-July. All right, cheers, everyone.